if you had to make a prediction here, uh, and you said Jaden Davis, where do you think he'll end up going to school? Michigan. All right. Uh, that's right to the point, which I like. How about um, Channing Goodwin, the wide receiver whose dad was a former Wolverine? You call Michigan. Him like Michigan. Okay. Michigan. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome in to the Amazing Blue Reviews. Good afternoon, Michigan football. As Langston Orch Jr., he is a columnist with the Charlotte Observer. He's making some predictions on recruiting yesterday, and that was uh, the, the money clip when he was making some predictions on the future of a couple of the Providence Day football players. Michigan, Michigan. We'll see what kind of uh, predictor he is. Welcome in to the Amazing Blue Reviews. Good afternoon, Michigan football. Uh, 50 degrees outside Southeast Michigan. It is a sun splash. It is exciting to be outside. No doubt about that. Here on the 21st of March, we're live weekdays talking about the latest in Michigan sports. And we got a good one for you today, ladies and gentlemen. If you like hearing about practice, not the games, that's not until September the 3rd when Michigan plays uh, East Carolina, but I'm talking about practice, Michigan spring practice. What's going on at practice? I talked to somebody who was at practice and I'll tell you what they had to say about the maize and blue and how they look at spring practice, but we'll start out talking a little recruiting with Seth Berry from the Maze in Blue Review, who's going to join us momentarily. I want to tell you that all the things that Seth is going to be, Seth Berry is going to be on about, is going to be recruiting. And you want to know what the latest is in Michigan recruiting? I tell you, when I'm on here to join the Maze in Blue Review today, go to michigan.rivals.com. You can find out what's going on right now. All day, all night with Michigan recruiting, spring practice, all of that. And you get a great deal going on right now. The great deal is you buy one month, you get four free, you get full access today. Use the promo code UMSPRING23. That's UMSPRING23. Let's uh, connect with Seth Berry, the Maze and Blue Review recruiting writer. And here he is, Seth Berry, joining us. And Seth, how you doing? I'm pretty good, Dennis. It's it's good to be back on with you. I know it's it's been a little while uh, since I've since we've been able to connect, but ready to talk about some Michigan football recruiting. And obviously, there's there's a ton of momentum right now uh, going on uh, with you know class 24, class of 25 guys, and a lot of guys been on campus the last couple weekends. So excited to talk about that with you here today. Yeah, you say momentum. Uh, this is cauldron, and it's boiling a little bit. And the key word today uh, for Michigan football is buzz, and I think it applies uh, just today to Michigan football recruiting. Just even today here on this Tuesday, there's a lot of buzz surrounding Michigan football recruiting. How accurate is that? Yeah, yeah, it's very accurate, um, especially when you've looked at the, the last couple weekends and, uh, you know, even today, there's a there's some in-state guys from from Belleville and Jeremiah Beasley, and yeah, Bryce Underwood in the class of 25 from Belleville. You know, five-star quarterback that's there for the second time in, in less than a week at this point. So, um, yeah, there's there's just been a slew of guys that that have visited campus the last couple of weekends, and uh, you know, obviously they they added the class of 23 uh, unexpectedly with Brandon uh, Hillman. So, you know, that was that was a big surprise. So, uh, you know, the 23 class even got a an unexpected addition there and, and the 24 and, and beyond is, uh, you know, things are, are looking really good on that front. If all goes to plan, you know, they still have to close on, on some of these guys and uh, see what happens. But, you know, as of today, things are, like I said, that, that key word buzz, uh, things are buzzing in Ann Arbor for sure right now. Yeah. And they actually have to commit. Then they actually have to sign. Those are no small things, but you know, it's like Michigan, you know, you get it down to the one yard line, but man, they're like down to the, like the one inch line. It feels like there's a lot of dominoes set up. And if, if Belleville's Beasley, you know, it's, he's no chopped liver. If he comes in and then you just think uh, about Underwood, that's so far off because they got, I don't know if they're, they're not bigger fish to fry, more immediate fish to fry 
right here, but that would be nothing but uh, great news. And speaking of that, I, I've put together a, a half dozen names that I want to throw at you because we could really sit here for an hour or two, and I only have you for a few, uh, only have you for a few minutes. So I, I put some names together, and and I start out with a running back out of Ohio who I think was in this past weekend in in visiting. I saw a picture of him with a bunch of other. Michigan recruits uh, at the stadium. Jordan Marshall, the four-star running back out of Cincinnati, Moeller. What do you make of uh, of Michigan and Marshall? Yeah, so you know they're they're really high on Jordan Marshall, and and this past weekend was uh, you know he's he's been there multiple times now to Ann Arbor to to make a visit. I think even before last weekend there was a lot of positive momentum and, and buzz around Jordan Marshall. Uh, you know, you talk about, and, and we're going to talk about a couple Ohio guys here. When I think the end of the twenty-three class, you know, when Michigan um, started to to really pull in some of those Ohio guys, and then they got Luke Hamilton for the twenty-four class early on, and and they started to, you know, Steve Klingscale and 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 his Ohio ties, and they started to get some build some real momentum in that state. And Jordan Marshall, you know, is is a part of that. And I think even before last weekend, they were feeling good. Um, and then, you know, for him to take another visit, uh, this past weekend is only going to help. I think Michigan's cause there, there's a couple of running backs in, in Jordan Marshall and then, uh, Taylor Tatum, you know, the kid from Texas in this class that they're, they're really pushing for. And yeah, we'll, we'll go on to him and they're, they're, they're really pushing for, for both those guys. And, uh, you know, if you, if you can get a commitment from, from either one of them, but let alone both, I mean, that's, that's going to be big for the class. So, uh, and then you talk about, you know, guys like, Blake Corm and, and Donovan Edwards, you know, their, their days are obviously numbered at, at Michigan with uh, their pro potential. So, you know, you move on to the 23 class with Cole Cabana, but then you're going to have to look for the, you know, for something in the 24 class as well to, to build that talent, talent and depth at the, at the running back position. So, yeah, these are two guys that Michigan, you know, they're really pursuing and, and two guys that are seem to be reciprocating, um, you know, the love, uh, you know, for Michigan's program as well. The Barry Buzz, I got it. You you come out swinging with the the Buckeye State Buzz, and then you know you you mentioned this tandem, and you know you 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 got you got Tatum, and you've got Marshall, and then you mentioned the names. And I know you're not comparing them, but you know it, it's not it wasn't crazy that you know you got Corum and Edward uh, in the next two. What's the likelihood that both of these guys? I mean, is it one or the other, or do you feel like Michigan? could get both Taylor Tatum and Jordan Marshall in this recruiting class. What's the chances of that? I, I think they could, I think they could both happen uh, just considering the, the, the possibilities on, um, you know, the roster with, you know, with Edwards and, and Corum leaving and, and just the need to build depth and, uh, and to do that there. I know, I know Tatum's family, you know, academically, they're, they're really high on Michigan. He's still figuring out whether he wants to play baseball as well. You know, so he met with the, the baseball coach the first time he visited uh, as well. And I had some good things to say about the baseball program. So that'll be interesting to see what he does, um, you know, in that regard, if he were to, to commit to Michigan. But yeah, I think there's a possibility there that, that they would end up with both of them. I think there's more of a possibility than that of that happening than say ending up with, you know, Jaden Davis and Brad Underwood. Um, or Bryce Underwood back to back class, back to back classes. Uh, you know, some people have talked about that too, but that would, that would, you know, a lot of dominoes that have to fall for that to happen. But, but in terms of Tatum and Marshall, I, I think that's, uh, that's a possibility. Well, talk about uh, back to back grand slams if they went Davis <laughs> and Underwood. You know, legacy recruiting has always been big for Michigan. And I was talking about the Providence Day kids yesterday mm -hmm. and Channing Goodwin, his father, here played at Michigan. Uh, is one. And then this weekend, we had uh, a Frazier uh, in town, uh, Blake Frazier, whose dad, Steve Frazier, started a game for Michigan the last time they won a national championship in uh, 97 at center. And, and Blake's in town, and man, he looks uh, he looks maize and blue all the way. Uh, what about Blake Frazier? How, how good should Michigan fans feel about the uh, the four star uh, tackle out of Austin, Texas. Yeah, yeah, I think you hit it right on the head with him being, you know, a legacy recruit, and uh, you know, people have talked about him joining this class for for a while, you know, because of that reason. And again, I think going into last weekend, people were 
we're feeling really good about Blake Frazier and his chances to to end up at Michigan. And I think over the weekend they 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 strengthen that case, and uh, you know that that uh, it's, it's looking good from from Michigan standpoint there. So yeah, I mean th- this was always kind of a uh, not a no brainer um, because you know I, I wouldn't put it at that at that stage yet. But you know the fact that he has the ties there with his with his dad, obviously playing. Playing in the late '90s, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and this, you know, six six two sixty, you know, really good sized kid, you know, great frame. And I, this would be a big addition to the class. And uh, there's a couple offensive linemen yet that they're they're looking at. And Luke Hamilton's, you know, playing a big part in in recruiting some of those offensive linemen, and then uh, some other players from the state of Ohio as well at different positions. But uh, yeah, th- this this has a chance to be a really good. You know, when we're talking about position-wise, uh, offensive line class and, and adding Frazier would only uh, help things in that regard. You know, Frazier's dad played uh, in, in the late 90s. I mentioned he started a game on the 97 championship team. But if I took you back to the 80s and 70s, Seth, are you familiar with the name Howard Cosell? Yes, yes. It's, oh. a, it's not my era, but, you know. No, I, uh, no, look, <laughs> little bit, I think before my time, but. Yeah. One of his famous lines was that, you know, it was the Ali Frazier, you know, these, these great fights. I think they fought three times. But the one time, down goes Frazier, down yeah. goes Frazier. So every time I see Frazier, I want to uh, – I think everybody that's old enough wants to use a little uh, Howard <laughs> Cotel in there. Uh, yeah. This, out of the weekend, I wasn't really familiar with uh, LaMason Waller out of California, a four-star athlete, 6'2", 165. But then I was on the Maze and Blue Review, and I saw you talking about uh, LW here. What, what do you what do you make of La Mason Waller? Yeah, it, it's interesting with this class of twenty five, right? Because you have you know two guys that are committed, and Mantras Walker and Chris Ewald, you know, that are both from SEC territory. A lot of the times when you see guys committed that early, uh, you know, they're in-state guys or guys that have, are a little closer to the area because they've they've been able to visit and they're a little more comfortable with maybe the area and, uh, you know, being able to get to Ann Arbor more often. But, uh, you know, with two, two SEC guys, you know, kind of there right now uh, in SEC territory, then you're talking about LaMason Waller, uh, who's who visited a couple weekends ago and, and is also very high on Michigan. Um, you know, he actually was able to spend some time with uh, – with Mantrez Walker, you know, on, on his visit, they were both there as well. And, uh, you know, they, from what, what I gathered, there was some really good vibes coming out of that uh, visit from LaMason Waller. There were going in and then that visit kind of happened. And uh, it, it sounds like he's, he's really all in on Michigan. So uh, this is a guy that, you know, they could add as a third guy for the class and you're kind of going all over the map at this point uh, with some of these guys that, that you might be able to add, but, uh, yeah, if, if Waller were were to commit, that's that that'd be obviously a really good start to that that twenty five class and uh, something they'd hopefully be able to keep rolling uh, in terms of the me- momentum, uh, you know, in, in the class of twenty twenty five. Twenty four looking good. Twenty five looking good. We've got Seth Berry just for a minute or two more. Uh, you mentioned big offensive line when we go back to the the twenty four class. They don't get much bigger than six seven. 320 Ben Roebuck out of Ohio, the Buckeye State. So that Buckeye buzz, uh, Barry, about uh, Ben Roebuck, a lot of bees in there. What about Michigan's chances? Uh, you, you you talked about guys showing up a lot to Ann Arbor. It seems like Roebuck, every time I raise it, it's like, oh, he's in Ann, oh, he's in Ann Arbor. He's, seems like he's spending a lot of time up here. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been in Ann Arbor now multiple times. And, you know, this is another guy that we – we talk about that that Michigan's really keyed in on uh, for a while, and you know, and we talk about that Ohio, you know, that Buckeye State momentum that's that's been going on at Michigan, and, and Luke Hamilton being a a part in, in helping recruit some of these guys like like Roebuck, and uh, yeah, Ro- Roebuck's a guy that's been on the radar for a while, and they're looking to you know they're looking to close in on him, um, you know, he doesn't as far as I understand he hasn't really come up with a decision date or timeline yet or anything like that. But uh, he's, he's a guy that's, you know, things have kind of unchanged there. Uh, Michigan's still, you know, keen in on him. He's still high on Michigan and uh, things are, things are going well uh, with, with Ben Roebuck. I love it. Let me give you one more. And this is a guy that I put up once in a while. I have a 
a, a five that I was going with, a fifty and five. And then I had a plus one, plus two, and plus three. And plus one was I Marion Stewart. Uh, things look so good for Michigan with Stewart. And do they continue to look good? Like I, I, I heard his name an awful lot like last month, and then I hadn't heard it a lot. But what about uh, Marion Stewart? Should Michigan fans stay excited about the wide receiver out of Bolingbrook, Illinois, in your estimation? Yeah, yeah, I think Michigan fans should stay excited about him. Um, you know, I think there's there's still a good relationship that's that's being established with Ron Bellamy and and Stewart and the coaching staff there uh, as well. It, it, it's interesting to see what will happen with the wide receivers this class because there's. You know, obviously they're very deep and, and talented and young on the roster right now. So, you know, say you, you get two wide receivers. I mean, say, you know, for example, Jaden Davis co commits and then, you know, his teammates come along with him. Um, you know, at that point, how many, you know, how many receivers do you actually need um, in the class to really to really round it out? So and how many will they take? So, but and Marion Stewart is is a guy I think they would they would definitely want to take. And there's you know he's very talented. There's been good momentum there in his recruiting. Um, you know, there's been other guys like Makai White from Virginia that they offered recently, and and he you know he had a top fifteen laid out before Michigan offered, and then he said, boom, you know, Michigan's my number one team right now. So you know, all of a sudden, uh, just like that. So there's some receivers there that that they can look at for sure. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of of how many uh, they they want or need to take in the class. So, but but Stewart's a guy that you know fans should still feel good about, and uh, and that you know there there's still a good relationship and something brewing there uh, with Stewart. The, the the receiver situation is just kind of interesting considering the the, the current depth and, and talent on the roster now. Seth, uh, you, you're doing a great job as a recruiting editor, the amazing Blue Review. I love reading all your stuff you have. I don't, I don't need you to go in detail how many forecasts that you have out there, but you do have a few. Give me one guy that you feel the best about of all of the Michigan recruits and the guys that they're in on, the guys that you're forecasting. The number one guy that Seth Berry is forecasting that feels the best about ending up with Amazing Blue Review, who would you say? I like, I like Brian Robinson, uh, the defensive end from – from Youngstown and we didn't hit on him and we have in the past, but uh, you know, like I said, another, another Ohio guy and he was talking to me and, you know, he visited the other weekend as well. And uh, you know, they're like guys like DJ Waller, who's also a Youngstown guy and and some of the other guys on the, on the team right now who are from Ohio are just, you know, kind of in his ear saying, you know, you know, Robinson, like when are you going to commit? And, and they're kind of, you know, giving him a hard time about, uh, you know, just, just when this is going to happen. Right. Cause he's been there so many times and uh, he has the, the family ties with Steve Klingscale with his dad, you know, they grew up, uh, you know, kind of childhood friends and, and things Ooh. like that. So uh, yeah, this is a guy, Brian Robinson, that I, I feel very good about. Don't know when, um, you know, a decision could happen, but I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling really good about, about Brian Robinson and his chances to end up in Michigan. I'm feeling really good about the Barry Buzz because I had him on my plus two. He is from the Buckeye State, which adds to the buzz and what Michigan's been able to do in Ohio. And he's another one of those guys that every time I'm looking, every time I'm reading your reports and everything, like Robinson's up in Michigan again. It's one of those things. So uh, I'm uh, I'm glad to hear you say that. Seth, great job. I know you got a lot of things going on today. We appreciate it. And we'll talk with you again soon. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, Dennis. Appreciate it. There he is, Seth Berry. And let's continue that buzz. And that buzz, when we're doing it now, is from recruiting to actually on the field. And if you like hearing about Michigan a practice, now, I'm not talking about uh, the games. I am talking about actual uh, uh, practice. I talked with somebody who was at practice recently and tomorrow, Jim Scarcelli, he went to practice recently. So we'll talk about practice today and then tomorrow we'll download all we can from Scar and his trip to practice. So two days in a row, we will be talking about practice at Michigan. And, you know, for me, the, when, when I say buzz, there's a buzz about Michigan football, and there has been 
a buzz about Michigan football. You know, two years ago, the 21 season, they they go through, and it just so happened that we we, we hit rivals. We knew it was going to happen for a couple of weeks, months. After the Michigan State game in 21, Michigan loses that game. You know, we're ready to take over on Monday, and we're, we're going to come charging in with an undefeated. Michigan lost that game. But they won the rest of them in the regular season and the, the Big Ten titles, you know, by now. They beat Ohio State. They beat Iowa. They go to the college football playoff. And then a lot of, you know, it's like, I don't need to tell anybody about that Ohio State game and what it was like to win the Big Ten. And you go to Indianapolis. I mean, everybody, I don't, I don't mind actually reviewing it. I have not tired of, uh, of doing that at all. But then they came back and did it all over again. This time they didn't lose any games till the end. And it was a very bitter loss. I'm just talking about the regular season and, you know, the Ohio State win again down there. Another trip to Indianapolis, another trip to the college football playoff. It has been, uh, it's been great times for Michigan football. And in Harbaugh, you know, three years ago, maybe it's just because they're winning right there. Three years ago when I looked at him, it kind of looked like, you know, then he probably was down in the dumps, you got a haggard, didn't seem all. And then now he's like as fresh as a daisy. And the guy I was talking with said that he was impressed. You know, Harbaugh's almost, uh, you know, damn near 60 years old. And he said at the three-hour practice, Harbaugh wasn't standing around over on the sidelines, sitting in a chair with a megaphone or on a golf cart. Harbaugh was in the mix of everything right in there, practicing with them, making the points and the energy in the, uh, uh, the person I talked was so impressed with just all of the coaches and just how things work, the vibe and everything through the practice. And then if I skip to the very end, you know, he said that Harbaugh had brought everybody out, on the 50 and they had many, and he thanked the recruits and the players and the families and the coaches and everybody, you know, that was there. And then he declared that there is a buzz about Michigan football and it is back. And, you know, and apparently, you know, that just sent a lightning bolt, you know, through everybody and everybody was fired up, you know, and then to attack the rest of the day after practice. And, you know, so that's, what's going on there. A very uh, energizing moment down at practice uh, for Michigan and a lot of buzz for the Wolverines. And, you know, there's a lot of buzz when you have spring practice, you don't get to see them a lot. Then you hear some, you get a couple morsels and everybody's all fired up. This is in previous years. Now where Michigan is sitting after these last two years. And and this doesn't, I was going to say, it sounds crazy, but it's not, maybe it sounds crazy. This year, Michigan's poised to do better than the, the previous two years. This might be their best football team that they've had in the Jim Harbaugh era on paper as we sit here in spring. So you can expect, you should expect, and expect to hear a lot of really good things coming out of spring. And and there was, you know, that way. The guy I was talking with said, I, you know, I was just trying to, pull some information from him, you know, get an idea of, uh, of what he thought. He said, yeah, he was watching the defensive backs and he was looking over there and he said, uh, you know, this is somebody that's been to a lot of, uh, he played college football and been a lot of pro. He said, these, these defensive backs, he's never seen a better group. They look like uh, NFL defensive backs out there. Uh, just the, the, uh, the, the starters, the depth, you know, I said, how did Amari and Walker look? He said, Amari and Walker and Keon Sab are standing over uh, by each other. And he put the freak label on him. He said, those guys are freaks. They're watching them over there. They look like NFL guys. And I remember last year when I went to the uh, the spring game and Will Johnson, it was, a, it was a fourth and one. And it was Will Johnson and it was Miles Pollard. They were both true freshmen and they were, they were playing the receiver and both of them, you know, I've seen enough defensive backs go th- get put through the paces and, you know, their technique and their hips and locating the ball and everything else, college and pro. And I watched both of those guys and I said, man, these guys, <laughs> these guys look like pros. And, you know, they just look, the technique was, uh, was, was awesome, you know, and the play, I mean, it's one rep, you know, I was talking about one rep, you know, the difference NFL guys, 
I'm sure if I talked to a coach and said, yeah, you know, you put that over there 20 times, uh, four or five times, you know, they're, you're going to see some, uh, you know, maybe get loose a little bit in some of the technique, and that's going to be the difference. But, you know, I, um, that one rep, and it was uh, the spring game, it was uh, it was impressive. So uh, mentioned those two guys on defense. I said, you know, how did the transfers look? And he said, you know, when you see um, – uh, Ernest Hausman, the, the the transfer from Nebraska, and the way he's put together, he said there's not a better looking uh, linebacker, you know, f- f- as far as the look test, you know, physically than Hausman, physical specimen. Said he looked uh, awesome. Josiah Stewart, who was the transfer from Coastal Carolina, is uh, is an impact guy, impact like packed together, not as not uh, as tall as you might think as as an edge, but you know, uh, uh, Dwight Freeney, who came out of Syracuse and played for the Colts, you know, he was this defensive end uh, that was more, you know, he wasn't 6'5", he was closer to six feet, you know, than he was 6'5". This guy didn't um, compare Josiah Stewart to Dwight Freeney. That's my comparison because he's saying he was a compact defensive end that kind of stood out from him just watching him, but – that's what he was looking at over on the defensive side. And I said, uh, you know, what about up front? And this guy can talk about Chris Jenkins more and just how he will lead the defensive line, what kind of year that he expect, how much better he already looks, the kind of leader that he thinks Jenkins is. He could tell by watching uh, Chris Jenkins. Uh, he said that, and, you know, he knows that Mike Senior is still got voted captain last year, said it would not be a surprise if Chris Jenkins was going to be voted captain, just a outstanding leader, outstanding player and, you know, coming back and being hungry and leading the defensive line. Uh, couldn't say enough about uh, Jenkins from a uh, good council in Maryland high school where he won a, a championship for Maryland the same high school that Michigan is recruiting uh, Aaron Childs, the linebacker, that's what Chris Jenkins uh, is from. So that's what they had to say. That's what the uh, the word was on the defensive side. Oh, one more thing, and it was about um, Will Johnson. I said, uh, you know, I was like, well, who else? Who else looked good? And he said, look, I was watching. He said, Will Johnson looks good. So, you know, you kind of expect to hear that Will Johnson looks good. Just like, you know, J.J. McCarthy looks good. Will Johnson looks good. But the impression, like, when you listen to J.J. McCarthy off the field, I'm pretty impressed when I hear J.J. I was impressed as a freshman, as a sophomore, hearing what he has to say. And, you know, I know the, the meditation and everything else, but he sounds like a seasoned pro. The guy I was talking with said, he thinks the same thing about Will Johnson. Listen to his interviews. He is as good off the field and as polished off the field as he is on. And he was pointing to, you got JJ like that, who is wise beyond his years on the offensive side. And then you've got Will Johnson on the defensive side. And you're talking about leaders and guys that are able to communicate, you know, their, their feelings and be a leader off the field as well as, you know, obviously they're doing it on the field, both of these guys, but he couldn't say, he couldn't have been any more impressed uh, with a conversation that he had with Will Johnson. So I, you know, those are things that, you know, that, that stuff all sounds good, but it all resonated with me. I'm like, okay, you know, I, I get that. That sounds good. And so, you know, the buzz surrounding the program, you get uh, JJ on the one side, you got Will Johnson, Chris Jenkins up front, Housemith looking good. Um, uh, the, the Dwight Freeney comparison that I'm making with Josiah Stewart. We'll see. Uh, I'll have to see him with my own eyes, but that, that was just what popped into my head when I was listening to uh, somebody that was at practice talking about, you know, what he saw when he was out there. Uh, I mentioned Sav and Amari and Walker put the, the freak label on him. On the offensive side, uh, C.J. Stokes. You know that, um, you know, Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards, they're not out there. You know, they're um, so depth at running back and being able to work. These guys are getting a lot of reps, whether it's Khalil Mullings or whether it's uh, C.J. Stokes or whether it's uh, both freshmen. Uh, ben Hall is in and so is Cole Cabana. But my source mentioned uh, Stokes and how good he looked 
going through some of the drills that he was watching. So, you know, that I feel like is good news when it comes down to it. And then uh, we were just chit-chatting there at the end. I said, "Who's? what do you think the biggest question mark? Or who's going to be the toughest player to replace? And immediately he said, Jake Moody. And it, and it makes sense. Jake Moody is the best field goal kicker in, in Michigan football history. Jake Moody was great. So you don't just, it's, as much as uh, you might like Adam Samaha, the, the freshman kicker or the, the walk on CJMP, uh, Cordell Jones, um, McNally, right? Is that what it is? I'm sorry, CJM, uh, Cordell Jones, McNally. You don't know. And he said uh, Moody was there at the practice that he was at. He said he was holding for Samaha, and he could see the the communication. Uh, Moody trying to take the kid under his wing and you know talk to him about. And he said Harbaugh was trying to simulate a lot of pressure as much as he could on these kickers, put them at different spots, surrounding different guys around them, you know, uh, getting in their, I don't know about getting in their face. He didn't say that, but, you know, do, and, but then it's just, you know, as I was thinking about this and talking to my guy, it's like, you're not going to know. I mean, you can bring the loudspeakers out. You can have them at spring practice when there's going to be more eyeballs. And that'll be a smart move by, by Harbaugh getting out there and and of course jay harbaugh jay and jim it'll be smart to get them out there and put them in some situations where you've got a crowd you got a camera and let's see you know what it's like because it is like me out in the yard with my pitching wedge i'm smooth and i'm knocking that thing 85 dropping it in there it's like guys at the free throw line can sit there all day knocking them down till you get people to start watching you People start watching you, and free throws get a lot more difficult. You get down with a minute to go in the NCAA tournament, and you're stepping up to the stripe, and you're down one. That is when you find out if you're a good free throw shooter. It's also when you find out when you, it's like walking up to the first tee. Be all day out of the driving range, popping that, and then you get up there, and everybody's watching on that first tee. So uh, the, the spring game will be a nice hurdle to see. And take a look at the, uh, the field goal kicking. And I'd say the punting situation as well. That's me just adding that on. But are, are you going to know East Carolina, UNLV, BG? It's still going to be pressure, more pressure than spring practice, more pressure than the, the spring game and the friendly confines of Michigan Stadium. It'll still be the friendly confines, but they're going to be about 100,000 people more, like 80,000 people more. Uh, so, you know, that'll be... That'll be big. I was, was going to say that'll do it. That'll be a nice test, but it's not like if you miss one against uh, East Carolina that Michigan's going to lose the game. You're not going to know. If you start looking at that schedule next year, you know, Michigan's, um, they play their three non-conference games at home like last year, and then they play Rutgers. They play two road games, Rutgers and at Minnesota. I think that is when you find out about your kickers. You know, one of those games will be at night. You're in Lincoln, Nebraska in the third quarter in a one or two score game. And you got to make a 40 yarder. That's when you're going to find out what, uh, you know, the, what these kickers and punters are made of. So uh, that's where I'm at. That's what I uh, am sitting. That's where I'm sitting. And what I heard a little bit about uh, practice. Let's see. Um, AJ says, you could have asked me those questions. I can tell you as much as some of these guys and maybe more. AJ, throwing his hat in the ring for recruiting analysts. I'm, I'm in, AJ. Let's go. There are some holes in the fences. Trevor McHugh, the great Trevor McHugh. I was exchanging some slacks with today. He says, no losses to rivals since the Maize and Blue Review went live. Two Big Ten championships. Some say we are good luck and the reason for the success. Well, that's right, because it came on uh, two days after the Michigan State game, and Michigan has not lost to Michigan State since we went live. It's a good point, Trevor. And of course, uh, 2-0 and against Ohio State. 2-0 and in the Big Ten championship game. I'm I'm there with you. 
Let's see. Uh, I'm going to give AJ. You know, he he was he was talking. He, you know, he's ready. He's ready to take over as recruiting analyst and maybe get down to the film room. All of that. You know, he wants to talk with Ron Bellamy and Sharon Moore about the route running and the route trees. He wants to put some more um, wrinkles in the Michigan playbook. But I do have to admit that w- when we started out. And I saw AJ here, and he was saying that he not only thought that Ohio State was beatable, he said why he thought they were beatable. And he said, he pointed to Michigan being tougher on the offensive line and the defensive line. And he said he did not see that toughness, uh, in particular, on the Ohio State defense. Well, you know, he he couldn't have been, uh, you know, the great Kresgen is what we have here. Uh, AJ couldn't have been any more right about uh, predicting the future. The great Kresgen. AJ, he was spot on. So there we go. Gary's giving a shout out from uh, Richmond. What's going on? Let's see if we can get some, get some new stuff in here at the end. Jason saying JJ is looking good with 10 pounds plus of muscle and weight. He'll be ready and poised to take some hits running the ball if need be. I actually hadn't seen um, a story about the weights. I actually hadn't noticed that, maybe comparing his weight from last year to this year. I actually haven't seen that, so I I don't know where that's coming from. But, you know, I don't think Jason's just pulling stuff out of of mid-air or thin air. Same thing. OT says, says Corum is the leader of the squad, in my opinion. Yeah, I think Michigan's got a lot of leaders. I mean, the quarterback's going to be the leader naturally because he's a QB, and I think JJ's a good leader. But I would agree overall. Like, the, the biggest – let me put it to you, like, the biggest star on this team is Blake Corum. The biggest household name on this team is Blake Corum. Now – how it works with the uh, the team is different than how it works with the fans. I mean, think the most recognizable person again on the Michigan football team is is Blake Core. I mean, he's a star. He's uh, you know he's got this million dollar smile. He went through the injury and everything else. So, and in the spokesman of the team, you know, you you hear him and everybody's listening. But I noticed that with the uh, the other guys in the team, he's got a little pied piper in him. I. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with you, OT. Quorum is the leader. I'm with you there. AJ is talking about rumors. Benjamin Hall is looking good. The big back from Georgia. I like him. People not up on him either. Yeah, well, I don't don't know about about rumors. Uh, I haven't heard any of that myself. Obviously, I'll be uh, eyeballing uh, number 28 in the spring game to see what he looks like with my own two eyes there. But people were, I think you say down on him because he was in high school after he committed. He got benched at his high school. Or if he didn't get benched, I, I, you know, I might be speaking out of turn. Somebody started, the guy that he was splitting carries with started, started playing over him or getting more carries than him. I don't know the whole story on that, but that's uh, why some had soured on him a little bit. But I'll take your word for it on um, when you come down to talking about getting, um, you know, rumors. (laughs) Who, Who knows where you're getting your rumors from? Let's see. Uh, AJ following up saying you are not keeping up. You can look at JJ and see that he's bigger. You don't need a report. You know, I saw a picture. Let me look here. I'm getting challenged. On my, I, I know I looked at, uh, I looked at Michigan. I was looking at Instagram. Let's see if they got it up here. It was Michigan football's Instagram. And and sometimes I don't know if it's a story. Here's it. Let's see what they. This might be it right here. That's not it. So it's gonna take me a second to type it in. You mish football. There it is. Pretty quick. 
Let's see. So they had some pictures, and here's one here. And this is somebody, and that is a picture of J.J. McCarthy. Can I tell that J.J. McCarthy, this is a picture from yesterday, that he is 10 pounds heavier by looking at that. I don't. I can't tell. <laughs> you know, you're a little bit better, Antoine. Maybe you saw him. Maybe was meditating with his shirt off, or something else. Uh, look at it says here. What I'm talking about. There's a buzz in the air. What's the theme of the show today? There's a buzz in the air. Uh, here's. Uh, oh no, that's McBurrows. Jenkins, who I was talking about, he looks a little big. I think you tell me he looks a little bigger there. He's put on 15 pounds by the look of things. Let's just go through it. JJ looks like he's up 10. And, you know, here we go with uh, a wide out. I'm trying to think about, you know, we got, um, we got Michael Barrett. He looks like he's put on 5, 10 pounds of muscle. He put on easy 5, 10 pounds of muscle. Uh, here's McBurrows and what looks like Sainra still. I'm going to say that, you know, McBurrows looks like he's put on a, a solid 10 pounds of muscle. I think you can see it in his legs. Easy 10 pounds. And like I said, Jenkins going up against uh, Trent A. Jones. I think a good 20 between these two. And that's good lean. That's good weight. I think kind of 20 that I put on this weekend watching the basketball games, that's a good, that's a good 20 pounds split between those guys. That's good leverage by Trent A. Jones, but I guess we'd have to see the how that rep ended up uh, turning out just to see it all. Well, here's a video. Monday morning, charged up. Oh, here's here's uh the Michigan's new freshman. I guess I didn't see this picture. That's Brandon Hillman. He looks pretty big. I don't know what his weight was before, Antoine, but he's looking pretty good. All right. Uh, Jason said he sent me a video. Where'd you send that video to? All the reporters were in awe. Hmm. Oh, here we go, Adam. When he was speaking at the podium last week, you could clearly see J.J. was bigger. Well, there's the answer. I watch most of all of those videos, but I, I have not, over the last week or so, I did not watch any Michigan videos. So, you know, you guys are, look, man, I'm trying to stay right with you guys. I try to stay in front of you guys, try to give you, but you guys have all watched uh, some YouTube video where, you know, J.J.'s, um, Hulking out a little bit. No, I'm not trying to look. If, if you see it, you see it. Uh, and it's some talk that they want to see uh, Edwards getting a little bulkier. He was easily shoestringed on many runs. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, you know, this, this is what we do. You know, sometimes, like, you know, you got the. We get the Mona Lisa, and, and you're like, and yeah, you know, I, I feel like you know there there could be a little bit more shading over here or something. Or you're talking about, you know, two models, and you're saying, you know, like um, she could be a little bit taller or something. You're talking about one of the great college football players, one of the great Michigan football players of all time, and you might want a running back with uh, cankles. Where you feel like you know he's, he's not going to be uh, so easily knocked over, but what I have seen with Donovan Edwards, I see a combination a wide receiver, running back, and when I look at some of the the great running backs that are in the NFL right now, I see I see Donovan Edwards. When I see Elvin Kamara or Christian McCaffrey, I see a Donovan Edwards type running back. Maybe you were watching the NFC championship game this year and you're like, you know, McCaffrey could probably put on a little weight or something. I don't know. Hey, we're all, 
It doesn't mean you, it doesn't even mean it's not true. We all do it. I'm not just sitting here with everybody that comes up like, oh, this guy's perfect. I don't think, I think Edwards looks good. He looked fantastic. The way that he was running the ball on those seven, the, the 75 yarder against Ohio State when he took off, or he, you know, that down at the horseshoe. And he ran those 75 yards and he ran past everybody. I thought, wow, that's one of the greatest runs that I've ever seen. I am in the moment against Ohio State on the road. It was like Colasar against Ohio State. You know, that memory is burned in my my brain for my life. And then when I saw Edwards take off for the 75 yards, I'm like, I'm going to remember this run forever. I didn't remember it for five minutes because he topped it the next time out with 85 yards and he was taken off down the field and nobody from Ohio State, there was just a big vapor trail into the the snake pit end zone when he scored again. One of the greatest runs of all time didn't even last for five minutes because Donovan Edwards with one arm, the one arm bandit was screaming down the field with another touchdown. So, yeah, I, you know, I was thinking, uh, you know, I think he really needs to put on a little bit more weight because he's getting shoestring tackled. I was thinking this guy put on one of the greatest performances that I've ever seen. And then, you know, they needed him the next week in the Big Ten championship game as well. And you know what he did in that game? He was bouncing off, guys. Take a look at I want you guys to go, the guys that are talking about, let's see him put on a little weight. Look at that run he had for the, the, the touchdown run against Purdue. He made a guy miss in the hole. And then he ran away from somebody with a, like a jump cut as a linebacker. And then a linebacker or safety, there were two more that he snaked in between. And then he put his head down at the goal line and broke two more tackles. He wasn't getting shoestring tackled. Hey, there is no shoestring tackle on, on Donovan Edwards in the Big Ten Championship game. When he went for 25 carries, 185 yards, and a touchdown after blowing up uh, against uh, Ohio State for over 200 yards. I wasn't thinking, you know, in the offseason, I hope he you know, throws some, some weight on those legs. Antoine likes to talk about his legs. Antoine, you know, you know, his legs remind me of Donovan Edwards, a guy. And, you know, I don't know how old you are, but there was this Michigan had a wide receiver in the late seventies and the early eighties. His name was Anthony Carter. And AC, there are people who are saying about AC, I don't know, he needs to put a little weight on. He needs to get some bigger ankles. He's got chicken legs. He's the greatest Michigan wide receiver of all time. So, you know, you want to see you want to see some cankles from Donovan Edwards? I don't. I think he's good. If I had to, you know, pick and choose of some of the things that I wanted to see, I'll I'll think about that. Because there's always a little something. Do I want some some toner offensive lineman? I'm feeling pretty good about where the team is at. You know, right now. But that's me. And, you know, I get it. Let's see. Eddie is talking about touchdown Tim Bianca Batuka at the big house in 95. Well, we're talking about one of the great, you know, backs in Michigan history. 313 yards. That was not my first Ohio State game. But the Bianca Batuka game was my first uh, Ohio State game covering Michigan. And you know what I remember about that game? Is that I thought Michigan was going to get beat. Ohio State had this, you know, gigantic, you know, they had Orlando Pace and Ricky Dudley, and they were the number one team in the country. I didn't think Michigan was going to be able to hold up against Ohio State. And the Michigan offensive line? In Bianca Batuka, punched him in the mouth. 5, 10, 15, 20, 5, 10, 35, 40, 5, 10, 40. All game long. 
bring up that game anytime you want, Eddie. I love to talk about Tim Bianca Batuka. Andres in the remaining moments is making a point. He would like to see Edwards develop that second effort type game. He's great at slashing through the hole and making one guy miss. Needs to also develop his physical game to go with his finesse game. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you. I I think you want, go back and, and watch the Purdue touchdown run. Maybe I'll cue it up for tomorrow. And I would say also, Andres, I thought that Donovan Edwards answered the physicality question last year. Last year at this time, heading into the season, if I heard one Michigan fan, I heard five of them talking about Michigan needs to develop a big back. Michigan needs a big back. I don't, you know, uh, who's going to replace Haskins in the short yardage? Well, the answer was Blake Corum was going to be able to do that. And, you know, they did get a big back in Khalil Mullings later. But if you go back and watch every carry that Donovan Edwards had in the non-conference last year, where did all the where did all the carries take place? I'm asking everybody. They all took place in between the tackles. And in short yarded situations, go back and watch the tape. You know what you see from Donovan Edwards? Two hands on the ball, blasting through the line. Physical, hard, tough yardage in between the tackle running. He wanted to show that he could run physically. And he did that. I don't think they kicked any passes out to him or any screen. He was doing all of his damage in between the tackles. And I get it. You know, like uh, you're, you know, you guys, if we were all, Golden State Warriors fans, and I was doing a Golden State Warriors pod, you know, that first year, everybody would be like, nah, you know, I really like Curry shooting from outside, but he's got to he's got to make some layups. He's got to make some inside game. He's not tough enough. Donovan Edwards can uh, physically, he is fine. And you're forgetting about the tough runs in the non-conference that he showed, and then you're forgetting about watch the Purdue tape. Watch those runs. I think he's fine. That's where I'm sitting. Let's see. Mark, the turf monster. Not many Haskins. Too bad Corum not as durable as Charbonnet. Losing to... Illinois and healthy quorum better than getting hurt and winning. Uh, okay. I, you know, I hear what you're saying. You, you was not, you didn't want to see Blake quorum get hurt. There's nothing I can say about that. I mean, if you're like, um, quorum, not as durable as uh, Charbonnet, I'll take Blake quorum over, over Charbonnet right now. If if you are presented that trade, you're going to take Charbonnet over Corum, Mark? I would. I wouldn't take that bet. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't make that trade. So that's okay. There might be some people that are like you that are sitting back and would make that deal. Mark talking about a Brady Bianca Batuka 90 field, 95 backfield. Yeah, that's that's not the case. Brady was not there. Br- uh, or Brady came in as a recruit in uh, the sort of a '95 because he was the same. Bra- Remember, Charles Woodson and Tom Brady were in the same recruiting class, and so it would have been '95 because. Charles Woodson had two interceptions in the second half of that game. He's got to get spin on the wheels. But I don't think Tom Brady played. It was on the team. I'm with you on that. Tom Brady was on the team. He was a true freshman. And I'm not sure in 95. Brady's first game 
I recall was against UCLA. Could have been, I'm going to say the 96 season, but I'm going to go ahead and look it up for you. How about that? Just so we know for sure. Because what I remember is that I was sitting there in Michigan, was playing UCLA. They did not play him in 95. They played him in 96. Michigan, UCLA. So 96 was Brady's first game. And I remember him coming in. And I'm like, let's see what this Brady guy has. You know what Tom Brady did in the first pass that he threw as a Michigan Wolverine? Interception. Pick six. Took it the other way. Hey, this guy. This guy comes in. Not a good start for the GOAT. As the GOAT came in and threw a pick six in his first pass ever in a game for Michigan. Tim with a point about uh, Jaden Davis. If U of M gets Davis, people say that Underwood would probably go somewhere else like OSU because of possible playing time. But if he goes to OSU, he would be in the same boat. Well, that's right, Tim. That's a great point. Look, you can get, like, when you're talking about, and this is where Michigan is at right now. When you are Michigan, now you can start looking to take Michigan could have taken Dante Moore, Jaden Davis, Bryce Underwood, back to back to back. That's what Ohio State does. That is what Clemson does. That is what Georgia does, and that's certainly what Alabama does. There's not other sco- many other schools, I don't know if any, I named them, that are able to you know pull, boom, boom, boom. Michigan has put themselves – whether uh, it's on the cusp, because they've got to go do it. That they ain't got any of those guys yet. But the way things are going on the field and the way things are going all around the buzz, the vibe with the program, uh, they're pretty close to being able to do all of that. It could happen. So that's it. That's where I'm at. We got... uh... We're weighing in on the running backs. Let's see. Brian Robinson is going to be a stud. I'm with you on that. Blake's got a little bit of Barry Sanders in him. A little bit. I think, you know, you know, Barry, Blake is built like Barry Sanders. And Blake can make a jump cut. Like Barry Sanders, he got some of those uh, shifty moves. There are not many backs that can do things. Barry Sanders, like Blake's got, like I said, the one or two moves. Barry had about, you know, I don't know, about eight to 12 of those different kind of moves where you squared them up. There haven't been many. There have been a couple guys that sometimes uh, have reminded me, two guys from the Eagles. One was uh, Shady McCoy. But somehow he is sometimes he had some moves like Barry Sanders. There was a back before him. He was a little bit shorter named uh, Westbrook. He also had some moves that at times he looked like Barry Sanders. But there have only been a couple that have actually done that. Mike Hart has built a lot like Barry Sanders. And, you know, Blake does have a, a move or two. but. There are not many guys. So that's when you get a move or two and you're talking about somebody, you know, that had like 12. Shady might have had, Shady McCoy might have had like four or five of those moves, three or four from Westbrook. That's it. Not too many when it comes down to uh, Barry. But it's my feeling on it. As an experienced season pro who was able to watch all those guys. Like you. Antoine. Eddie says Jim Harbaugh is not afraid to play two quarterbacks. Uh, Jim Harbaugh demonstrated it. it was a it was a huge move, Eddie. He played JJ his first year because he had to get him in there. But what was revealing was when the competition was after the first game 
or was it in the summer? I have to predict or remember the exact timing, but it, it might've been um, after Harbaugh made the announcement that they were going to have the battle Royale. And that in the first game against Colorado state, it was going to be Kate McNamara and the second game. It was going to be JJ McCarthy. And then we were going to see whoever played better was going to win the job. When the announcement came down and they talked to McNamara, McNamara indicated that Harbaugh's not going with any rotation this year, which was a really key move and a great move by Jim Harbaugh. You don't, you don't win by spinning the quarterbacks out there in rotating. You should be afraid to play two quarterbacks. Two quarterbacks means you have no quarterbacks. Not a good idea. So Harbaugh, Knew what he was doing last year. He was not going to be playing two quarterbacks. He had the battle royale. JJ won it. The rest is history. So he played him because he had to as a freshman. But that's it. All right. Coming up tomorrow, Jim Scarcelli. Scar, we will press him on what he saw at Michigan football spring practice. That's going to be a lot of fun. That's tomorrow right here on the Maze and Blue Review. Thanks, everybody, for participating in all of your opinions. They're all valuable. And until tomorrow at 1 o'clock.